Hey kids, it's Mr. Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Uh, out and about on another bike review on a glorious autumnal day. The sun is out and uh, I'm pleased to be out on another Yamaha. This is the XSR 700. Stick around, stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think of her. So the XSR 700 then is, uh, as I say, a retro style bike, but it's very much a modern machine. It's uh, basically, you can think of it as an MT-07 uh, with some fancy retro clothes on. And uh, it's a bike I've been trying to ride for absolutely ages. In fact, it's the third or fourth time that I've arranged to ride this bike, but uh, it's been proving pretty popular, the demo bike, uh, down at my local Yamaha dealer, because every time I've uh, arranged to ride it, they've sold it by the time I've come to ride it. So uh, uh, I'm glad at last I'm on the bike, and uh, I've been looking forward to riding it, because uh, a while back I rode the XSR 900. Uh, that's the triple engine version. This is the parallel twin. And I love the XSR 900, I love the way it went, I love the way it looked. So, really looking forward to ride and get to know a bit this, the uh, baby brother. Now when I say the baby brother, of course it is still 700cc and the first thing that surprised me about this bike when I jumped on is just the amount of grunt that it has. The twin engine over the triple just sounds a little bit more deep and throaty. Let me just uh, overtake this, yeah, it's all clear. And as you can see there from the overtake, absolutely no lack of grunt in this engine. So I was wrong to think of it as the uh, baby brother to the XSR 900. It is, has got a smaller CC engine, but it certainly has got no lack of willingness to go. So let's just get a few uh, practical items out of the way. You can tell, can't you, once you've uh, been on a bike for just a few minutes, whether you like it or not. And uh, I absolutely like this bike already. There are a few things that come to mind though that surprise me about it. So first off is the grunt. It's a lot gruntier than I thought it was gonna be, which is a good thing. And then the other thing is the seating height. This one's fitted with a non-standard seat, which I'll show you when we do the walk around. This one's got what's called the flat seat, I think it's called, uh, attached. And it's very comfy, but it also makes the bike quite high. So when I'm putting my feet down this, I'm on the balls of my feet. So not a bike for particularly short people, I think. Riding position though, very comfy. My legs are at a slightly an acute degree, slightly tucked, less than 90 degrees, but not hideously so. Handlebars are nice and wide, uh, and uh, obviously I'm sitting upright here being a naked bike, so very comfortable bike. And the other thing that strikes me immediately, as I just in the riding position here, and I'm looking at the, the dials and so on that I'm presented with, is the mirrors. The mirrors work beautifully well. Uh, and also, what I like about these is they're actually shaped like mirrors should be shaped. They're not all these fancy, weird, pointy, pentagonal things that modern bikes seem to have these. These, these are actually mirror-shaped mirrors, so what a, <laughs> what a nice treat that is. In terms of the display, we've got an LCD display here. And again, although this is a retro-style bike, very much a modern uh, display. It's got everything you need as well. These two little buttons here flick you through all the usual trip and so on. And I'm pleased to say it does have things like a temperature gauge built in. It's also got a proper fuel gauge. We can see I'm half full at the moment. Clock and everything else that you need. So, and our uh, rev gauge or rev counter around the outside as well. So really like it in terms of that presentation. It sounds great when you drop her down a cog. What I like about the Yamaha retros, this and the XSR 900, is they're not pretending to be an old bike of uh, you know years gone by. They are very much a modern bike, just with a retro flavour. So unlike things like, for example, the Bonneville uh, from Triumph, it's not pretending to look like an old Yamaha from the 1970s. It is very much a modern bike, and it feels like a modern bike when you ride it. So for me, things like the LCD display work on this bike, just because it is a modern bike. Whereas on things like the Ducati Scrambler, I felt like the um, Ducati mixes too much of the old and new, whereas this is very much a new bike, as I say, with a sort of a nod back to the classic uh, look of what a motorcycle should be, tank, wheels, engine. This is very much a back to basics bike in that it doesn't have things like uh, traction control or riding modes or anything like that. It is uh, Euro 4 compliant, so it does have ABS, which is useful. It's not switchable though, just cuts in when you need it. Uh, so I love back to basic spiking. This is just a proper funster. In terms of the switch gear, it's all typically Yamaha quality. I like the way that they do this combined uh, cutout and start button here. And it's uh, again a quality item. The one thing that's not so good on the left hand bar I find is this 
indicator switch it's a little bit small and fiddly uh, and I have to kind of look to see to get it and once or twice I've hit the horn instead so not quite so good these switches I think could be a little bit bigger that's something I'm not so keen on the bike right nothing behind let's uh, say cheerio to the Mazda even in fourth gear there she absolutely pulls away like a rocket very impressive engine this twin it's only putting out something like 78 brake horsepower but uh, I'll go through the specs in a minute but it feels much more peppy than that it feels a bit more like my Triumph Street Triple that's putting out something like 110 115 brake horsepower so Yamaha have worked some clever magic with this engine what I also like about it is what it sounds nice it's got that low rumbly character that you get from twins but because it's got the 270 degree crank it's got some real you know that indefinable thing about it that we call character it's not bland it uh, feels like a motorbike should feel handling wise she's really light this bike or it feels really light again I'll go through the details and the specs when we do the walk around in a minute but she's lovely and light and flickable through these turns suspension I would say is on the firmer side or maybe I would call it firm to soft <laughs> does that make sense it's not so firm that it's uncomfortable but it's firm enough that it's not wiring around in the corners and over the bumps you can feel what the bike is doing underneath you which I like what a glorious day to be out on a motorcycle sadly the summer here in Blighty seems to have been all too brief and we're now heading headlong into autumn it's a windy old day but uh, lovely these days when the clouds have been blown away and the sun's out it's just a glorious thing to do is to be out on a motorcycle right let's find uh, my favorite spot to give you the walk around on the bike and show you this beast I'll just show you my feet look in fact my feet are pretty much almost flat on either side I'm on the balls of my feet but it's uh, it's not quite as high as I thought once you get going hello sir love the sound of this thing as you pull away it's got a lovely low rumble about it actually sounds very similar to the uh, Triumph Bonneville T100 which it competes with I guess okay let's pull in here to this hotel where there's a nice little spot to do a walk around for you tailor made this little pull in for the walk around easy to find neutral really light stand excellent <laughs> I had to look for the key then it's actually tucked behind the instruments which is a little bit unusual not a problem just different okay here she is then and there's that seat that I mentioned the non-standard one as I say I think they call this the flat seat not sure if it changes the height but as I say the bike is quite tall yeah anyway, there she is this is in the matte black which I think makes her look really mean let me get the other camera out and we'll go through the specs okay so here we go then so this is the Yamaha XSR 700 and uh, this is the 2017 model so Euro 4 compliant but the bike itself the XSR 700 has been around for a couple of years 2015 I think it came out so by no means uh, new to the market uh, apparently a pretty good seller for Yamaha as well and I can see why because it looks good particularly in this black I think I love some of the little touches they've done here so if we just point out some of these to you before we go through the spec things like this panel here with the grill I just think looks really good a little bit different this panel here uh, with these holes drilled in it just nice little styling touches that they've done uh, and here's that uh, flat seat that looks good there's a sort of single seat version as well that you can get uh, as well as the standard seat of course all sorts of accessories you can get for these there's the rear light which is uh, one of those love it or hate it items uh, I absolutely love the way that looks and uh, just little things like the XSR logo on the tank which uh, I think just smacks a little bit of Roland Sands design or something like that just think they've done a nice job of making the bike that let's face it is an MT-07 engine and frame just look completely different okay let's go through the specs then so the engine 689 cc uh, two-cylinder engine using what Yamaha call their cross-plane philosophy uh, if you look at it I think it says CP2 down there stands for cross-plane 
two cylinder I guess uh, in fact this is a 270 degree firing order so that's what gives it that nice sound power wise it's actually 74 brake horsepower uh, can't remember what I said just now but it's actually 74 torque 68 Newton meters at 6500 rpm so it's all in the sort of real world range seat height is actually 815 millimeters as standard with the standard seat so that's a sort of a high class as a medium height not too tall not too short uh, but you need to check that if you're a short person uh, fuel tank it will hold 14 liters I think the tank on this looks really nice from this sort of angle to me it's got something of a Ducati Diavel about it but maybe that's just me uh, brakes it's got uh, dual discs on the front which is quite nice because sometimes manufacturers uh, skimp and just put single discs on on these sorts of bikes but now we've got uh, dual discs as you can see and it's got the wavy pattern as well and those tires the unusual tread you might uh, recognize those those are the uh, Pirelli Phantoms I think uh, so they're the same as you get on things like the Triumph T100 which have a sort of a retro look uh, it comes with ABS as standard uh, the fancy lights front and rear there's the front one which uh, again I've read some people don't like that light but I actually think that looks really nice and I just like things like the brackets and sound that they've done I think they've done a good job uh, and let's have a quick look at that switch gear as well there's the funky uh, display in the middle and then the switch gear standard stuff nothing complicated just your lights horn indicators and then on this side that combined start stop switch which I like uh, together with the indicators and hazard lights and that's basically all there is to the bike in terms of the spec uh, and to look at so uh, yeah just a no-nonsense fun little bike okay let's jump back on ride us some more so as ever I must say thank you to these people Brian Gray's power biking in High Wycombe the uh, Yamaha dealer for the local area for letting me ride the bike go and check them out if you've not been down there it's a massive uh, TARDIS like building with uh, loads of bikes uh, brand new and second hand as well as loads of uh, aftermarket accessories and stuff as well go and see and say hello to Sam tell him I sent you right let's see what the turning circle was like on this well actually it's really tight really useful turning circle and I should also say the price of the thing of course it's uh, down in the value end of the market it's surprising for something that looks such nicely built machine 6,599 on the road according to the website which means it's a little bit more expensive about 500 pounds more expensive than the standard MT-07 but you'd expect that given the extra bits and pieces it's got considerably cheaper than things like the Triumph Bonneville T100 or indeed the Ducati Scrambler which I suppose you could say it competes with so price wise it's spot on now just down here a little way is a road that's one of my favourites to ride can't remember what the number of the road is but it's uh, towards Tame and if you can catch it with no cars on it it's absolutely beautiful so it should be a great uh, little road just to test the handling on this machine now I seldom get this road to myself so let's see how it works out okay, just coming into the de-restricted area when I say that it means national speed limit applies so I can do 60 miles an hour on this bit of road as opposed to the 30 that I was in this is the road I was talking about, it's uh, the B4012 to Tame if you're ever up this way. It's just a nice few mile section of twisty, nice tarmac. And it uh, looks like I might get it a little bit clearer for a change. A little bit of gravel on the corners, got to be a bit careful. A nice row with some nice twists and turns and little cambers and elevation changes which makes it a joy to ride sadly a 50 mile an hour limit which limits your fun a little bit but yeah the perfect bike for just sort of country lane blats this actually perfect bike for riding in town as well because it's so light and nimble it'd be a good little commuter but I think uh, if I had to pigeonhole it and I'll put this down as a as a weekend fun machine oh there's a white van to kill my fun lovely on these corners handling is just neutral and beautiful 
I'll just check there's nothing behind and I'll just check the back brake. Mm, back brake works perfectly well. Not superb, but no worse than any other motorcycle back brake. They don't tend to be that sharp. Okay, let's just check again. I'll do the front brake. Front brake. Yeah, it's okay, but uh, it's not quite as strong as I thought it was going to be, given it's got the two discs up front. Front brake lacks a little bit of uh, bite. Perfectly adequate. But I expected it to be sort of, you know, eyes bulging job, but it wasn't. I'll just try that again, check behind me. Got a dry road. Hard on the brakes. Yeah, they work fine, but it's not, uh, it's not up there with things like I'm used to. But it certainly wouldn't be uh, something to put me off the bike, it's a minor point. Lovely on these turns. Right, I think what I might do is turn around up here and do this little stretch of road again in the other direction so I'm clear of this van. I'm loving the turning circle on this, it's really nice. Now as I mentioned, Yamaha are huge on accessories for this bike so you can uh, customise it as much as you want with things like, you know, seats and uh, exhaust and all the usual stuff. I actually quite like it as it is to be honest. But one of the things I do like about this particular machine, which is unusual, is this matte black finish. I'm not usually a big fan of, of matte finishes on bikes, but on this sort of retro style machine, I think the matte black makes it look kind of menacing, and I, and I rather like it. So, And also, just looking at that headlight out the front there, it just makes it look sort of ratted. I mean, it's obviously not a rat bike, but it's got that mean menacing look. And if you kit it out with stuff, well, you know, like I oh, am, I've got my riding jeans on, and uh, this sort of retro style jacket, this is my Oxford jacket, it just, uh, you know, it makes you feel mean, and that's that's a good thing, isn't it, about a bike? I know it's a bit pathetic, but uh, that's one of the one of the things I like about bikes is they do just make you feel good, and that's got to be a good thing. Sadly, what's not a good thing is having turned around to be clear of that uh, truck, and now I'm behind another white van. The scourge of the southeast. And sadly, with these. Uh, double white lines all along this road, I'm going to have little opportunity to overtake him. Oh well, some you win, some you lose. So this bike, for somebody uh, with more skill <laughs> than me, I imagine would be an absolute amazing wheelie machine. Just the way it feels with these handlebars, it feels like you could just hoist the front wheel no problem at all, but uh, I'm not about to try that on somebody else's machine, or indeed on the public highway. But if that's your bag, I imagine this is a great wheelie machine. We're off again. So this is another favourite little stretch of road. It's one of those roads that's uh, so much better riding it in this direction than it is in the other direction. Mainly because when you go up it, and I can't tell you what the name of this road is by the way, I think it may still be the A40, but when you go up it you get two lanes. So uh, you've got a bit more runoff area if you get it wrong. Uh, and when you come down it you've only got the one lane and it's sort of dark and can be a bit slippery coming the other way. So. Much better going uh, this way, which I think is uh, technically, well, west to east. They said that it's pretty dark down here today. Bit of a sneaky corner this one because it tightens up on you as you go around, so you've got to be careful. What a great bike to do it on, though. I think if I had to come up with uh, one word to describe this, which isn't fun, then it would just be cool. It just feels a cool bike to ride. The sound of it, the riding position, the power that you've got available, just makes you feel good. And that's what uh, riding a bike as a motorcycle enthusiast surely is all about. As far as uh, weather protection and wind protection is concerned, well, of course, there isn't any. <laughs> so you're in the full blast of the wind, no different to any other naked bike in that respect. So you're not going to be tooling along at 100 miles an hour because you're going to be blown off the bike. Hello, sir. A nodder at last. But at uh, you know, normal road speeds, here we are, 60 miles an hour. Absolutely fine, I'm not in any turbulent blast, it's just a constant stream. 
no problem at all. Okay, sadly it's time to make my way back to High Wycombe and uh, to take the bike back to the dealers, otherwise they might think I've run off with it. So what's my summary then of the XSR 700? Well, as you can no doubt tell, I, I like the bike. It's a lovely little machine. Uh, it's not perfect though. I have found a couple of things I don't like about it, so I'll just cover those off first. And they're both fairly minor to be fair, but uh, they're just little niggles. The first one is this indicator switch. It really is quite small and quite hard to get, you know, to find. I guess if, you're only, if you've only got one bike, you'd, you'd quickly get into your bone and muscle memory and it wouldn't be an issue. But, uh, you know, I ride lots of little, lots of different bikes and I find each time I've gone for that, I've had to kind of feel for it. So that's a bit of a faff, but you probably get used to that. And then the other thing that uh, I'm not so keen on is the front brake isn't that good, isn't as good as I thought. And it's not inadequate, uh, as on some other bikes. Um, it works absolutely fine, but given it's a twin disc setup up front, it's just not quite as sharp as I expected. Those are the only bad things I can uh, find about the bike on this first sort of impressions type review. Other than that, it's a comfortable ride, the seating position's great, it's got loads of go, no lack of power. I think the thing just looks cool. The suspension is quite nice and firm, so the handling's great. It feels really lightweight. The price of the thing at six and a half thousand pounds on the road is brilliant. I guess the real question would be, would I buy this over, say, a Bonneville T100? Well, that's a very, very difficult question because I did love the T100, which in my mind is the sort of classic retro bike. So I think if I was just after a bike that looked old-fashioned in the proper retro uh, sense of the word, then I'd probably go for the T100 or the T120, the Triumphs. But if I just wanted a bike that was fun to ride, that had retro styling and had some options for me to customise, then yes, I would go for this. If you took this or its bigger brother, the XSR900, and put it up against something like, say, the Street Triple, another bike that I love, but is a classic motorcycle in that it's a tank, two wheels, engine, you know, a naked bike, then, you know, these days it would be very difficult. I would have to ride the two back to back and think very hard about it. This very much is a modern bike, as I say, with the retro style. And it works really, really well. I like it a lot. I've been impressed with it. You could use it for everything. You could use it for commuting. You could tour on it if you wanted to. I'm not sure it worked great as a two-up machine. But for just a no-nonsense, fun blast, value for money, and a really nice bike that's something a little bit different, then you could do an awful lot worse than this, the Yamaha XSR 700. So there we have it. That's my first impressions review of the bike. Hope that's been of some interest to you, and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Messenden Flyer. Cheerio.